Today we are going to talk about files. I know that last Thursday you learned about double loops. Now, here's an important thing to remember. Double loops give you great power, but also you have great responsibility. Because once you use double loops, things are going to get very, very interesting. Okay? So here is my first warning. For a lot of things, you do not need double loops. In fact, almost all things that we ask you to do in CS1 do not require double loops. Double loops require, are required for things like find all pairs of points, right? Or that you have the Sudoku board, so you have to do two loops, one to go columns, one to go rows. But for a lot of things, you actually don't need double loops. And in fact, for the homework, uh, I accidentally uh, made it so that you actually see this, because I gave you this huge baby's name file. If you use a double loop, you will see that your program will be excruciating the slow. Okay, uh, so this is a good way to remember that you must use the right solution for the right job, which is actually very difficult. This is something we are going to learn. And basically, when you come out of CS1, hopefully you will have an understanding of how some solutions are very expensive computationally. And you generally don't see how expensive they are, meaning that they take a long time, unless you actually um, run it on extremely uh, large data. So in this case, the baby is, is not extremely large, but on the larger side. So if you write a very inefficient program, you will see a problem. So today, as we start to learn files, I want you to, remind, I want you to remember that all file processing should really be a single loop. You really have no need for anything we ask you to have a double loop. Okay? That is just kind of a blanket uh, question, but you know, there are things that will require double loop, and as you see more examples, you will understand why. So um, with that, I want you to remember that the Sudoku lab is difficult, and I know it's difficult, but also lots of people said they learned a lot from it. So make sure that you start it. And you also start the homework. The homework should not be as difficult, but you know, may take you a little bit of time. Start everything early so that you have enough time in the weekend to actually study. I've already posted the review lecture, review uh, questions for exam two. So just just as a reminder, exam two is next Monday at six p.m. Okay. And everything else I posted on Piazza. OK, so today I am going to move directly to the topic because we've been kind of going a little slow. So we are going to today learn to work with files. And this is actually a fairly uh, easy topic. But in a way, it's very different than all the other things we have done. So. We are going to go slowly first, but then we are going to write some programs. Okay? So in this class, we are trying to achieve three basic things. Right? So the first thing we learn is how to write correct programs by using different constructs and different variables. So um, files is one of them, and it's one of the uh, very basic ones. It turns out it's my bread and butter, because everything I do requires files. Okay, I'm a files and strings person. Um, and depending on what type of programs you write, files are going to be crucial. The second thing that we really try to learn very, very hard, and we will spend a lot more time doing that, is how to take your programs and make them modular. Make them simple to read, simple to write, and simple to debug. And for that, we keep trying to talk about writing functions and so on. We will continues to talk about program structure. And the most important thing is modularity. And we will talk a lot about that. And I will try to write more and more and longer, longer uh, programs in class so that we will do that. And the final thing we will learn, we haven't yet talked about today up until now, and then probably after exam two, we'll start talking a lot more, is efficiency. Making sure your program doesn't take forever. Even in CS1, you are able to write programs that take a long time. 
and we will see why that is. We will talk about complexity. We will talk about writing more efficient programs. But that's the one thing you will continue to take into your next classes because that will be an important thing. OK. So to get started, if you want to play with me, uh, we can go to Piazza. And I put a whole bunch of um, files under resources. Please go along and then take that and put it in your um, computer so that we can have access to the same file. So if you go under resources and resources, you will see there's a file called fileexamples.zip. Take that folder and unzip it. And you will have access to many files, so some of which we are going to use. Okay, so take the file examples. Just so that I go along with you, I will do the same. And you will see a whole bunch of files here. Okay. We will start with some of them. We have already seen the Yelp and the Legos. I don't have the babies here, but you know it's similar to all others. Uh, I have a couple more. So census data is actually a population of uh, different towns in New York State. Film data is uh, basically all the films that got uh, taxpayers' money to shoot in New York State. It's actually the dirty side of movies. So you can see which shows are shot where. Um, and um, Yelp we have seen before in the lab. And rpi.txt is, in fact, the, um, the music that is burnt to your brain, I assume. Right? At 12, it always sings. You know, at 12, there's the song. It's actually, this is the lyrics to it. Anyway. OK, so what is a file is there are different kinds of files obviously, um, but what we really care in this class is text files. Previously, we have actually seen binary files like image files. To be able to use image files, you actually needed a special library, right? So you needed to do something special like get the pillow module and then load the pillow module. Whereas uh, most files are basically uh, text, then you don't need something special. Most programming languages will come with uh, basic ways of reading text files. So let's try to figure out what to do with text files. So any text file is something you can open either with a text editor or, a, um, or your wing. So I should be able to do the same thing on wing IDE. So you can actually open a file. By default, it looks for uh, Python files. But I can also open any file. So let's open this. OK. So this is what a file looks like. So it has multiple lines. And uh, in this case, you can imagine that there is a line here. And then there's a new line because you have the next line, right? So you have. Here's the old RPI, her fame may never die, new line, and then the next line, and so on. My uh, husband's mother is uh, an English as a second language teacher, so she generally uh, was looking at some of our uh, literature, and she had actually read this to us in good intonation, so that's the only thing I remember when I read this. OK, so if I want to work with a file, information that's stored in a file inside my program, I need to do a few things. First of all, I need to have a program that is saved in the same folder as the file. If it is not the case, you have to tell where the file is by giving directory structure. We don't need to worry about that right now in CS1, but we need to really be in the same folder. So you can make sure that your uh, program is in the same folder by saving it into the same folder. 
So I'm going to save it in the same place. Okay. So now I'm in the same place as the file. Okay. So to really be able to do anything with the file, you actually have to uh, create a variable that is a file object. Okay. So that is actually very easy to do by using this new function called open. Open takes as a uh, variable the name of the file, which is in this case rpi.txt, and it returns you an object. And the object that it returns is of type file. Okay. So this is the this is actually much simpler in Python than in any other language. This is the only thing you have to worry about. When you open a file, it actually returns you a file object. In fact, if I were to say print f, it will tell you that f itself is a file object. In fact, it's a, a file object for this file name and is open for a read. So you can open files to read or you can open files to write into them. Okay, so let's do reading first. So what happens when you open a file? Let's try to do this. Um, so I am going to try to remember. So we have five lines of RPI song. Okay, so we have rpi.txt and it has five lines. <coughs> So here is to old RPI, her fame may never die. All right, I'm going to stop there. What's the next line? I'll write one more line. Here is to old Rensselaer. All right. You must, you must memorize this by the time you graduate. There will be an exam, so on and so forth. Okay, so you have a five, there's actually a sixth line that is completely empty, right? So this is your file. So when I open this file, it now, F knows that there is a file here and its name, and it actually points to the beginning of the file. Okay. So, F, think of F as pointing to the first thing in the file. So you can access the file in one of two ways. You can look at your file as a single massive text, right? This is okay if it's five lines, but you may also have 100,000 lines, right? So you can actually take a whole file and read it as a single block of text. So. Uh, I'm going to say lines is f dot read. So when you do read, it will take the whole thing and read it as text. Okay. So for example, if I say print lines, you see that it actually took the whole thing and read it as a single string, which has multiple new lines, right? So it actually has the five lines and a... Uh, uh, new line. So now, what happened to F? F was pointing to the beginning of the file. After I read the whole thing, F has fulfilled its promise. In fact, what happened to F is, since I read the whole thing, right, so I have read the whole thing, now F.read points to the end. So F.read read this whole part. So now, as a result, f points to the end. So what is, what is at the end of file? There is nothing else. So if I try to read anymore after this point, there should be nothing. So once I've finished the file, all I read is just empty string, right? There is nothing else.
So I opened the file, I read the whole thing, and since now it's at the end, I am done. There is nothing I can do with this file anymore. If I want to read the file again, I really need to go back and reopen it. One thing that you can do is you can close the file. So that means F is done. There is nothing that you can do. In fact, if you try to read the file, it says that you cannot read a closed file, right? So we basically had three states, right? So basically, for a file variable, there are three states. Either that variable f, whatever you call it, points to a real line in the file, That means you can read something, right? You can read text in the file. Two, F is pointing to the very end of the file. In that case, anytime you read, you just get nothing but empty string. So, there is nothing I can do. Or you can close F. That means you really cannot do anything with that file, right? Closing F seems kind of a pointless activity, right? For reading it is, but we will see why it's not always the case. No. So you asked a question for which I don't know the right answer. Um, I do not know if there is a reopen for it because I've never used it. I basically myself open it. So I do not know. Uh, but often you just manually open the file again if you want to read it again. But that's a good question. Uh, in other languages, actually trying to read from a closed file will give you an error. Python seems to be nice about it. Okay. So, are you with me so far? You open a file, you can read the whole file, and then you can close the file. Now, the point is that this is actually not the convenient way of using files. Even though you, all, you will all want to do this, this will actually be complicated. Often what you want to do is you read the file one by one, line by line, okay? So if you wanted to do that, instead of using read, you can use read line. So let's do the same thing again. So I am going to open again rpi.txt. But I am now going to only read one line. So instead, I'm going to write line is equal to f.read line. So since I'm reading one line, This is what line will be. Okay, so now I read one line. Now there are two things that happen. I read the line, assigned it, including the new line, after all, and the F has moved. So, going back to this, F originally pointed to the first line. When I do F dot read line, <coughs> Now F points to the second line. Okay. If I do it one more time, now I have read the second line. And then the pointer F moved to the next one again. Third line. Fourth line. Fifth line, 
What do I expect now? So now I kept moving to the next line. So right now, there is nothing. What will happen if I read again? Nothing. Okay. So it is the same process, except now I'm reading one line at a time. And when I reach the very end, it basically only returns me an empty line. So often what you want to do is to actually write a loop to go through line by line and read a single file like this. We will do that in a second. Uh, and then stop when there is no more any new lines that you're reading, which is when you reach the empty string, which is like this. Okay? So, and remember that the line that it is returning you is always the empty line. Okay? Now let's do the reverse. And then we are going to go and become a little bit more fancy. Okay? First, let's understand what happens with a file. But let's also do the opposite. What if I want to write to a file? I want text. I want to generate text, nice content, put it inside a new file. In that case, you are also going to open a file. But this time, you are going to open the file for writing. Okay. So I generally name my variables that for writing out to be f out, and variables for reading in as f in or just f. But you can use whatever you want, but this is kind of what I'm used to. Okay, And you have to give the file some name. So let's say um, like this. But now you have to say that this file is actually going to be open for writing. Now when you open a file for writing, two things happen. One is that everything that was in that file is erased. You have nothing, nothing that was in that file will be saved when you open it for write. And then the pointer f is moved to the first line of the file. Okay. So now you have opened it with the write mode. Now you can write into the file by f out.write. And you can write whatever you want. You can write. And in fact, you have to put your own new line. Otherwise, it will not advance to the next line. So there is no right line. There is only right. So I, I heard this uh, line at the conference. I will write it here. This is just so that you remember that everything takes time. It's not, nothing is done in one day. Okay. So when you are done with a file, you write what you want to write. You must close the write file, because otherwise the changes that you have made may not be saved. Okay. So reading a file is fine, and not closing that is fine. But when you write to a file, you must close. So I am going to close. Okay. And if you want to see what that looks like, you can open up like this. Right? So I wrote this line with a new line, this line with a new line, and that's it. So this is kind of the basic I.O. So let's try to do some exercise. Then I will go to the string operation. Okay, so why don't you try and go through the exercise questions one by one and ask yourself whether you are following what we are doing. And I will give you five minutes to do this. And then I want you to yell at me the answers. And then we are going to go and do some other things that build on this. <coughs>
Now skip, skip two. Let's just do one, and then we'll come back to two. So let's just do only um, one and three. We haven't learned split yet, so we will skip two for now, and then we'll come back to it. All right, let's, let's try this one by one. So one is that I open this file. Okay. So I open F. <coughs> F points to the first line here, F. So line one is F dot read line. So what will line 1 be? This is going to, yeah, thank you, go on. Including the new line at the end, right? So this is line 1. 
And now f actually points to here. Line 2 Now, what is line two? Okay. Everybody's yelling at me. Is it uh, the whole file or the rest of the file? Rest of the file. So, so the F kind of pointed to here, so it's going to read it from that all the way to the end. Okay. I know it's not obvious based on what I told you, but now you know. Okay. So this is line two. So you have in line two, two new lines, right? Including the two new lines at the end. So let's see if I can pull it out. Oh, there we go. Okay. Next I have line three is equal to f dot read line, which will be empty. Exactly. There's just uh, really not much going on in line three. It is empty. Okay f dot close. Now I reopen again. Because f was pointing here, so line 3 was here. Now I reopened f, that means the f pointer now moves again to the top. So if I do line 4 is equal to f dot read line. What will line 4 be? Yell at me. Again, the first line, same as line 1, right? So line 1 and line 4 should really be the same. Okay, so line one is the first line. Line two is these two lines together. I guess there's no new line here. Line three is nothing, empty. And line four is this line plus the new line. So you have an extra new line, right? So don't forget that when you read from a file, you always have the new line added. Again, this is not true in every programming language, but it is true in Python. So if I wanted to write this into another file, I can do the same, so I can open another file like but I'm going to open it for write so I can write line 1 and then close. If you really want you can also write line 3, which really is nothing. If you want to write line 4, turn. And if you want to see what that looks like, and this is what it looks like. So you see, like, weird things have happened because in the file, I actually did not have a new line after the last line, so there is no new line there. It's kind of squished with the next line, right? So often when you are reading and writing files, you want to have precision because you don't know when you read whether you're going to have a new line or not. And often the first thing you do when you read a line from a file is to remove the new line. Okay? It turns out that there's a very easy way to do that. We've already seen this. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember this uh, function called strip? Yeah, so you can use strip for this. So, uh, so for example, so you may have lots of spaces or even some tabs and a new line. Okay, so you can strip a specific character from a string. What it will do is, it will go to the string, 
and from both ends, remove all the characters that match. So in this case, the new line. So in this case, it will return you a new string that doesn't have the new line. Generally, this is the first thing you do. If you wanted to take this, you can also strip, for example, tabs. You can also strip. I keep adding a new function on top of it. You can still strip the space. So you basically have the actual data, not the spaces on both sides. So this is something you do so often that, uh, that Python is nice enough to give you this uh, default one that will take from the ends of the string new line, tab, and space, all of them. I only learned this in class when I was telling them this will not work. The class said, no, it does work. So here you go. So the strip is your uh, friend. You can strip certain things, or you can strip new line, space, and tab, which is generally what you want to strip from anything. So generally, when you read a uh, line, that's the first thing you do. The second thing that, so, and then you can strip from left or right, depending on what you want. The second thing that you do is, when you have a line that has a certain structure, like, uh, let's open this one. Let's open one of the files that we have, so we can actually see. Uh, let's try Yelp, which is a nice big one, okay? So in Yelp, you can really see that each line has a bunch of different idea, different elements, but they are all separated by a character. What character is that? It's a vertical bar, right? So let's try to think about how we can do this. So you can have, for example, multiple things separated by a comma. So you can have... Um, dog, cat, pig, bird, uh, cow. All right. So generally you think that basically each of the uh, element is separated by a comma. Okay. So this is a very common thing. So often you read some line, but the line actually has multiple elements separated by some separator. It, in this case, it happens to be comma. So what you can do in this case is you can take a string and you can split it on some character such as comma. So what it will do then is it will take the string and divide it up to elements each one is going to be a new substring in a list of strings. So it will return you a list that basically has every element before and after the separator. So it's very important that we understand how split works because we are going to use it like crazy from this point on. Okay, so I have dog, cat, pig, bird, cow. Let's say I had this. Okay. So if I'm splitting this line on comma, okay, it will take the string before and the string after, including the space before, because I didn't tell it to do anything about space, and put each one into a new element. In fact, after comma there is nothing, but that's okay. I'm going to actually have even a small empty string here. So this is now going to be the list that this returns. Okay, so let's see that in action here. So now I have everything, including the spaces before or the spaces after, for every element before a comma and after a comma, right? 
if there is a comma at the very end, so I'm going to even have an empty list at the very end. Okay? I'm telling you this for a reason, which you will see once you start to do what I told you not to do. But uh, so far, this is what the split is. This is going to become very important in a second. So if I wanted to process, for example, a line from uh, Yelp, What should I split the line on? It's a vertical bar, right? And this is really what you had in lab three, was it? The Yelp lab. So you have the name, the coordinates, the address, the URL, and the bars, and all the uh, reviews. So this is exactly what we have given you in class, right? So this is actually much easier than you thought at the time. All right. So now let's go back to this. So when we are reading files, reading one line at a time is great, except you don't know how many lines are going to be in a file. So what you need to do is you need to um, actually write a loop. So this actually is very easy to do. It's on the files that uh, is on Piazza. So I took just a line from this file here. I, I lost where it is. But let's come back to it afterwards. So we'll we'll do we'll do actually. Um, Parsing in five seconds, okay? Let me just do the loops first. All right. So instead of reading line, files line by line, what I'm going to do is I am going to write a loop that goes through every single line. And it turns out this is actually very easy to do. So what I am going to do is write a simple for loop that says for line in F. So this is basically doing what I just did, read one line at a time until you reach the end of the file. Right? So this is basically repeating for me f.read line until I come to the end of the file. Okay. In fact, just to show you how this works, I am going to create a list, and every time I read a line, I'm going to append it into this list. And then print this out. Okay. So this is such a simple construct that you will miss when I did this. Open a file and then write for line in F. So now Python is treating this file as if it was a list of lines. In the same way you saw a for loop over a list, it just is a for loop over the lines of the file. Okay. Apparently, I cut and pasted from a PDF, so I have all these weird characters that are not uh, this. Okay, let's do this for rpi.txt, that's better. Okay, so why do I have a new line after each line I print here? I have not stripped them yet, right? When you read a file from a file, when you read the line from a file, it has the new line. So let's try to be a little bit nicer now. So I am going to actually take the line and strip it. So it's not going to have the new line. 
that looks nicer. And here, all my lines don't have any new lines. And there we go. It's pretty simple. So let's try to do a couple more exercises. And then... I will... Uh, I will do some parsing. Okay, now I want you to do, do, do this one. Suppose you have a file containing test scores like this. Okay. So you have each line of the file is test scores. Instead of test scores, let's say it is just um, uh, your exercise times. Okay. So I'm going to put each one on a new line, and I'm going to save this as scores.txt. Now I want you to write me a file, a program that reads this file, scores.txt, and then prints to score in decreasing sorted order. Okay. So now this is a this is the first time we've done an actual problem in this class. Okay. So first you have to think. Whenever you are, you know, given a program, you have to think. What are the things that you know? You know how to read a file, but really sorting <coughs> the scores is something different. Is there a container that you know that helps you do that? Think it through, don't yell it out, and have a basically plan of how you want to do this. Write out the plan, okay? Do not write code yet, just write out the plan of what you want to do, and then try to implement that as much as you can. So this is what we are trying to achieve. We want to write a program to read scores that txt, each line containing a score, and then print scores in decreasing order with index on the left. Okay, so I want you to think about first how you're going to do it. Have an outline up here in the comments, and then we are going to write code to do it. And it's going to be very simple, very few lines of code, but it will show you how you can do very complex things with very few lines of code, okay? Take about five, maybe three minutes, try to come up with a plan, and then we'll go further. No, scores is not in the file. I just wrote down a simple file here. If I if I thought hard enough, I would have put it in, but I forgot.
So do you have an algorithm for me? <coughs> do you have an algorithm for me? Okay, let me hear it. This is actually a lot like the homework problem I gave you, right? Except that in the homework problem, each line has multiple items, so you have the split, but other than that, it is very similar. So your instinct is to think very difficult things, right? You know, I read one line and go through the, every line in the file to find if there's something smaller than that. If so, I print it, right? So the point is to think simple. What's a simpler algorithm to do that? What will I sort? All right. Other people are telling you the same thing? How about facts? Read the file into. What is the thing we know how to sort? List. Okay. Read the file into a list, right? So that I can sort the list. Then I can print the list, right? <coughs> That's easy to do. Now you need to sort the list and then print it in reverse order. That seems difficult. Why don't I sort it in reverse order so I can just print it? So that is my algorithm. Read the file into a list and then sort the list reverse and then print the list. Since I need a number that tells me I'm going to use a range. So let's do that one. So here is the way I'm going to do it. And I'm going to write this because now from now on I promise that that's what I will use. Okay. So I'm going to create an empty list so I can put the numbers that I read into it. Open the file, go through every line in it, and convert the line into an integer. Technically, you should really strip the values, but it turns out that uh, even if you didn't, it will work because it's Python. Um, put that into the array. Here I am done. Okay. In fact, you don't even have to do it like this. You can do it even shorter. Okay. So now I'm going to sort. The file in reverse. So now I am going to use a range. So that I have the number I index and the value at that. I am going to print the value and the index. So I am going to print i and nums of i. So a few things to rem remember here. Since you write open scores, by default it's assumed to be read. If you wanted to actually write it, this will be the same result. So, you know, if you don't write anything, if you don't write read or write, it will always assume it's read. So default mode is reading. If you open a file for write, everything that's in that file is erased. If you want to open a file by adding to it, you should open it for an append. So that's actually an A. Okay. But if you don't put anything, this will also work. Actually, you don't have to do it in two steps. You can actually write it like this. This will have the same effect. This is just a shorthand for the same thing. Okay. But for now, we are going to do it in two steps so that uh, it's easier. Okay. In fact, this is a very, very short algorithm, right? The short problem. So 
It just goes from 16, line 16 to uh, line 23, less than 10 lines. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about a few other things, and then we are going to write maybe some more exciting programs. So if the file that you want to read is not on your home directory, but it's somewhere on the web, Right? The method is almost identical, except to open it, you have to use a module called urllib. So if you wanted to open a file that is in a different place on the web, then you have to use urllib. So let me show you an example. In fact, I am going to open, just as a meta reference, the course notes for this class, for this lecture. So here is a file that actually has the course notes that you are just using. It is written in this format. If you want to see, I can do the same by, first I need to import URL lib. Then, um, is it URL lib that you're looking? Okay. So I am going to open this URL. You can open any URL, so don't worry if you miss which URL I'm typing, but I'm going to illustrate to you with this, okay? And you can see that this is in fact, the same information that is in here. So, the way you do anything from a website is the same as uh, you do with a file, except the way you read is a little different. So, if you wanted to see this in action, I'm sorry? The URL you mean? The reverse is to sort in reverse. In the, in the homework, it also explains it to you. So, I would do the same thing. So I would do read every line and print line.strip, which will obviously be going to be huge. We are not at the summary yet, but this is the same exact thing that you are actually using, right? If I wanted to first print the, uh, let's say the first 10 lines, I can have a counter and every time I print a line, I'm going to increment the counter, and if that counter is, let's say, 10, I'm going to break out. So this will repeat this loop for 10 times, and then it will break out. You have seen break last lecture, right? Yeah? All right. Next class, even though we have sets, and sets are not in class in exam, I'm going to spend half an hour talking about all of these different break structures. Return, break, continue, and also shortcut in if statements that we haven't got to cover. All right, so outside of that, there really is nothing else to files except just getting used to them. So here's the thing for you to remember, okay? If you take anything away from this class, I want you to please get comfortable with using a for loop. Do not use a read and a split, because you're going to get into trouble with that. You have to be well aware of where the new lines are for that to work. Whereas the for loop will always work, okay? Um, the text file is not the only data file format we will use. And you will see that different file formats have very different uh, styles. So how many of you have played with HTML? Okay, good number. So HTML is kind of this uh, uh, format where you have a starting tag and an end tag. So the content, basically everything HTML is in between these two. Whereas within HTML, let's say you have a single, it's one part called head, one part called body. So everything is in between uh, close tag and open tag, open tag and close tag but the spacing doesn't matter, okay? 
We are not writing HTML in this class, but I'm just showing it to you because for Python, spacing is the main thing, right? And the tags don't really matter as much. So different formats, different methods. We are going to use uh, a format called JSON because it's used by web, web uh, sites all the time. And JSON is basically very, very close to Python. Uh, it basically has all the data types that Python has, and it's in text format, but there's a very easy to read and write. I have found, though, there is a uh, bug here, because you will not have simple JSON. Some of you, we removed it. We are instead, we are going to use JSON, but you need a module to read and write JSON. Very often, you read a text file, and the text file itself has a strange data type, which actually just did not come out either, uh, which is the, basically the main thing we are going to do, where you may have, for example, a data type like Yelp, where each line is uh, one, one piece of information, except that information has to be split in. Okay? So, um, Here's my interesting uh, point to this. Parsing means reading something from text and then converting it to something your program can use. Parsing is one of the world's most boring tasks, except you have to do it, okay? But I will not make you do any boring parsing, so I will leave it to the next professor, but we have to do at least simple parsing, okay? So let's do some parsing and write one program before you are done today. So, okay. And I, and I think that you should take all of the files that I gave you and parse all, every single one of them and write something. So, I'm going to take this file called film.txt. Okay, that's okay, we'll come back to that later. And parse it. So basically this file, contains information about movies. For each movie, it has the name of the movie, the year that it was shot, the county it was shot in, and the region that belongs to. So each line is a data point, and each line basically is separated by one character. In this case, what do you think that character is? It actually is path. You can see because these are aligned, right? If it was space, this will not be aligned. So it's a tab. So in this case, it happens to be tab. It could be comma. It could be any other thing. But luckily, we know how to do tab. So what we are going to do is we are going to first read this file, parse it. Then we are going to use it to find all movies filmed in a certain county, OK? So let's write a simple program. So I'm going to read film.txt and split each line. I can't really hear you well, but uh, I'm just doing it so that we get used to it. So I'm putting all my main program inside if main dot main. Okay. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I am going to take each line. I'm going to strip it so that I remove all the new lines. And I'm going to split it with tab. Okay. And I'm going to just print M just to see if it actually is working correctly. And since this is a huge line, huge file, I'm only going to look at the first five lines. So I'm going to have a counter here. Okay, 
I want to do this so that I can see what happens in the first five lines. Okay, I'm going to save this. All right, so uh, here's an example of something that went wrong. Basically, it, it read the whole file as a single uh, as a single string because it actually doesn't have new lines. I like it when things go badly like this for me uh, because this will happen to you too. So how many of you use uh, Windows here? Okay, and how many of you use Macs? Right? I'm sorry to say you two are incompatible. Uh, so depending on which text editor you use in Windows, Windows may use a different new line. So there are two different new line characters, actually. And for many Unix systems, Linux and Mac, it is the slash n, right? But in fact, there are two different uh, new line characters that come from using typewriters. Have you ever seen typewriters? So in the typewriters, there are two things that happen. One is that the, the, you know, the cylinder goes to the end, so you want to move it all the way to the beginning, and the other one is to move it to the next line. Okay? So the Windows system kind of uses the two characters that does that. One is called carriage return, which moves the thing. The other one is the new line. So the carriage return is slash r, and if you actually read a file that doesn't have new lines, this is what you get. Okay. So let's not use film.txt. Let's use census data because I will actually do this later. Okay, so that's better, right? Because in census data, you have the new line. I will not give you files with slash r, but this is a very common thing that you will run into. We will talk about that later. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to find the population for Albany? So if I'm going through every single line, I'm going to check for every line if the first element is Albany, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to check if the zeroth element is Albany. Only then I'm going to print M. Okay. There is no Albany. How about it starts with Albany? All right, so we have Albany County and Albany City. What if I wanted to actually print not just this, but I want to print actually the values in it? What if I wanted to print the string and population? Now, I want you to remember this very simple thing. Did I need to write multiple uh, loops? No. All I needed was go through, the, uh, go through the file once and find the information that I'm looking for. Once I want what I'm looking for, I can print it. If I wanted to do something extra, something like sorting, because I actually need to print it in a different format, in that case, then not only I read the information, but I need to put the information in a list so I can sort it, right? So you have to think about what is the minimum, minimum uh, complexity that you need and try to write that program, okay? All right, let's stop here and we'll continue next time. <laughs>